All right, uh, my name's John. I'm a uh, freelance writer, journalist, editor, uh, basically work with words all day, and in my spare time, I take pictures. So today we're gonna do uh, what I normally do, which is ultimately just walk around and see what we see. We've started in the Barbican, which is really close to a lot of places around the city of London. It's obviously a beautiful place, and we're just gonna proceed in no particular direction. Like, we have no sort of set agenda or nothing we need to take off or anything like that and we're just gonna see what happens. Like, we'll try and talk about like composition and lines and shadows and like kind of what I look for in making a good picture. Um, we're probably not gonna talk about which aperture setting we're on or anything like that because I won't remember that. So we're just going to see what happens, I guess. You know, I try to be uh, selective. I shoot on film. So, you know, each, each shot costs money. So I started shooting on film in 2019. Like, I'd been shooting digitally on and off before that, but I thought I'd just try analog just because I loved the look of it, and I don't know, I just loved the kind of tactile, tactile aspect of it. It just, it really clicked with me in a way that digital kind of didn't. You know, just having this sort of physical object that was kind of in the camera and like this chemical process of it, I just found interesting. I have some Kodak Pro Image 100 in here, I believe, um, which I've actually don't think I've ever shot with before. Like, uh, I've almost finished this roll. I've got some more Kodak in my pocket, but um, yeah, so I've not shot this one before. That's an aspect of it I really like, trying all the different sort of emulsions and the different types of film and how different they all are and how individual they all are, like the individual character. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what these ones come out like. I really do believe like it doesn't matter what camera you have. Some cameras are easier to use than others and some cameras will give you better results than others or will make it easier to produce good results. That's just true, but it doesn't like it doesn't matter in that way. There is no type of camera that you need to be able to take a good picture like that doesn't exist. Like Anything you can do, you can obviously do with your phone, you know, you could do it with a phone you've had for like 10 years if it's still working, if it's got a camera on it, it'll work. You can produce something, you can produce something like fun and interesting and memorable with it. Like you can use old cameras, new cameras, it really doesn't matter. And I think that's the case with every, with every camera. You know, whatever you're using, it will have its quirks, but it's yours and you can make good pictures with it. The Barbican is somewhere I come to a lot and it's somewhere a lot of London photographers come to a lot. The light tends to hit this place very beautifully because it's very open. There's a lot of open space even amidst all these really tall buildings. So you get this really good play of like light and shadow. At the Barbican or at anywhere really, we're looking for like any number of different things. And we're always look I'm always looking for lines, I think, like lines of interest that lead towards a subject, lead away from a subject that like intersect nicely like here like down here you've got the sort of vertical diagonal the kind of horizontal there um you're looking for color as well like I'm, i shoot on a mixture of color and black and white and i think it's um i think it's definitely a good exercise to do both because and here is a great example of a place you can shoot both like sometimes it's really fun to be here totally black and white and you're just looking for line you're just looking for contrast you are, you're just looking for sort of shape. And then sometimes you give yourself color, like I've got color in at the moment, and you can bring the greenery into play. I think it's the thing that kind of keeps me coming back to taking pictures ultimately, and just the thing that you shouldn't be afraid to get it wrong. Even on film where, you know, you are paying by the shot, you shouldn't be afraid to get it wrong. And sometimes, you know, generally there's a lead time of about a month between when I take a picture and when I see what it looks like, because that's just how like it works out with getting them developed and stuff like that. And it comes back and it's out of focus or even worse, it's like there's nothing technically wrong with it. It's just dull. You know, the flip side of that is sometimes one really surprises you. Sometimes, you know, you just sort of, you're walking along and you just turn and you see something. It might be something fleeting because it might just be the quality of light. And then just kind of without thinking about it, you just go, bam. And it might be that one, you know, that might be, that might be the one that really surprises you. That might be the one that ends up getting printed, gets framed on your wall. Like you can plan, I think, as much as you want. You can, you know, 
set yourself rules as much as you want. You can walk around being like, okay, rule of thirds, okay, um, you know, golden ratio, whatever else. And you'll make good pictures doing that, but you can also, it's also great to be free to surprise yourself and just to, just to let something happen. So a huge part of this always is observation and just looking and that's all you're ever doing is looking like I sometimes feel like once I start you know a walk a session a shoot whatever you want to call it it maybe takes a few minutes to kind of slip into the mode but once you do you're kind of you know you feel yourself slip into the groove and you're like ah, oh, okay and you're looking around you're on the lookout for moments for scenes for just anything that catches your eye really because like you know, I think we've said a few times already, like anything can be a picture, anything at all, but you have to see it, you have to observe it. Training your eye is as important as, you know, learning which dials do what and the ins and outs of operating a camera. Obviously you do need to know that, but I don't know, it's, uh, it's only half the picture and you can argue it's the less important half. Um. Yeah, I do feel like something that I have learned is that one way you can make, you know, just your pictures much better and much more interesting, one like easy way that doesn't cost anything really is just by like getting a different angle. Like it feels like, you know, so many people when they're taking pictures, wherever they are, it is always just from sort of head height, chest height, whatever, it's just like that. And you know, if you are just willing to just find any kind of different angle at all, just like whether you go up, whether you go down, like whether you kind of come under something like that, you can just get something much more interesting and like something that's a lot more memorable. You know, what can I see that someone won't see if they're just strolling through here? So I just kind of noticed the way like the edges of this building kind of come cut into the sky here. Like we've got a really beautiful kind of, uh, we've got a really beautiful sky today. Like you can see there's a little cloud, but there's not too much. So I quite like looking for things that really kind of cut into that. And so you get that nice kind of sharp contrast between the sort of two elements. And so we can just, we kind of come down here cause we've got quite a wide lens. We can kind of get the scope of it quite well, which is nice. This is, we got the 28 here and the nice thing about this is it doesn't move. So we can just sort of frame up at our kind of leisure here. Um, like you don't want to get it too central. Like I think it feels like often, you know, the first thing you have to kind of unteach yourself when taking pictures is to like, not just bung something in the center. Cause you know, that's what you, that's what you do when you've got like a, a disposable camera or your smartphone or whatever you, um, one second. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you do when you've got like, you know, uh, one of those old uh, disposable cameras you take on holiday, you know, you see something and you just go, oh. and you know, you can do that. And sometimes it, sometimes it works really well. You know, some subjects really lend themselves to just being like, just being bumped in the center. But um, I don't know, often I feel like it's worth just pushing yourself a little, like pushing things a little further and just being like, what else can I do with this other than pop it in the middle of the frame? You know, like what other story can I create by where I put this? Something I do um, think about often and is always worth bringing up is about photographing people out in the world because you know when you're when you're outside you're taking pictures you know you will take photos of people you're in a public place you know people will feature in your photographs and that's fine I don't think that's wrong but I think it is something you have to be sensitive about and thoughtful about and something you have to have rules about rules with yourself because no one's gonna tell you not to no one's going to stop you but you need to be disciplined and smart with yourself. Like, I mean, there's kind of obvious stuff. Like if there are children running around, you sh probably should not be taking pictures of them. And that can be, 
you know, that can be, it can be a shame sometimes because sometimes it's a beautiful picture, but you can just, you know, you can reason with yourself it's probably not appropriate. If you feel in any way any kind of compunction or any kind of sense of, I feel like I shouldn't be taking this picture, then you probably shouldn't. You know, unless you are a, you know, caveat, unless you are a professional press photographer or whatever. For the most part, if you are just somebody out there doing this for the fun, doing this because they like to, and you have a feeling like, I shouldn't be taking this picture, then you probably shouldn't, and that's okay. I think sometimes when you're starting out, it can be, you know, the question you kind of have to ask yourself and answer is like, what do I take pictures of? Because, you know, you've got a camera and then there's the whole world out there. It can be kind of overwhelming. And I think a thing, I think to look for first off, you know, if you're not that sure, if you're just starting out is what you might call like easy wind shots. You know, when there's just, there's something, something you can just kind of hone in on and just be like, oh yeah, that works, that works. That'll make a nice picture. And so something like, a kind of repetition, you know, like a sort of a nice line or something like that where you can, you know, if there's like here we've got some planters that are all arranged in a row very regularly and there's kind of this very regimented building behind them. There's like this along here with the kind of concrete slabs that's also kind of in a row. You've got all these kind of elements leading together and you're just like, yeah, that's a very nice easy win. I can get a nice picture out of that. It may not be the like best or most exciting picture you ever take. Like, ideally, you know, you'd hope to go on something better, but it feels like you can start off with something like that and get something that's dynamic and exciting from it and that you enjoy. And that can kind of, you know, spur you on to keep going and spur you on to do something else. Okay, so we've um, we've come to the city, which is just like, uh, you know, the bit we're in is just uh, about a 10, 15 minute walk from the Barbican. And um, I think it's a really important thing. I think it's like, you know, once you get comfortable in an area, then, you know, you can keep going back there, of course, and keep discovering things. But I think it's also important to like, move on, move out from that and discover other places, even if it's just a short walk, because wherever you are, you know, you'll find something different if you take a bit of time and go down the road and it means you can, you know, you can challenge yourself a bit. Like here, we're sort of, we're hemmed in a bit more. There's less of that open light we had at the Barbican, but we've also got these really tall like structures and uh, a lot of this kind of blend of old and new, like, you know, these very old churches in front of these extremely new buildings. We've just got like a different set of challenges and a different set of things that are interesting. And so if you just keep exploring and keep pushing out a bit to find somewhere else, then you'll find more things that are interesting. So, uh, as a summary of everything we've gone through today, I think uh, like top tips to remember are like, uh, the top one is like look and observe. Like, I think that's the best thing you can train yourself to do is to always be looking around, always be observing, like try to get your eye in. So like when you're just walking down the street, you're kind of always somewhat in that mode of like, oh, that's, that's a picture, that's a picture. And you don't always have to take them. Like we were talking about earlier, it's like you don't always have to be shooting, but being like mindful of it and being thinking about it is so, so important. So I think another tip is organic lines, is like looking at lines that are created by light, lines that are created by shadow. Like that's a really good way to make a photo that is yours, that is not just a photo anyone could have taken, is something that's really specific to you and specific to the moment you were in. Um, another tip when you're out and about is being respectful, being mindful, you know, thinking about what you're taking pictures of and whether it's appropriate, whether it's right and you know, whether it's okay to take it, and sometimes it's okay if it's not. Um, there's other tips that I just like, you know, it feels basic, but it's so easy to forget, and I've forgotten it a million times, is like making sure you have everything you need. So in my case, it's like making sure you have film if you run out, but it's, if you're shooting digitally, making sure you have battery, you know, either you have spare batteries or you have some means of charging, you have some means of keeping going, you have memory cards, you have everything you need because that is so easy to forget. So, and I think the final tip, like, you know, I think it can sound basic, but it's like a lesson that so many people just don't learn is just shoot, just shoot and keep shooting. Just, you know, the, 
The not very good picture is better than no picture at all because at least you learned something from it and at least you did something and you were out there and you observed. And also, you know, the moments, those perfect like crystalline moments where everything comes together will only be captured if you are actually there for them. And so, you know, part of it is just pounding, you know, pounding the streets and pounding the shoe leather and like actually being present for it. And you would hope that like every picture you take, or at least, you know, most pictures you take are getting better at all times, that, you know, the hundredth picture you take is better than the first one, the thousandth is better than the hundredth, and it keeps going like that. And, you know, it can be frustrating at times, you know, sometimes you can feel like you're not getting any better, sometimes I do, but, like, you are, really. You're learning what not to shoot as much as you are learning what to shoot, and that's really important, and it can't really be taught in a non-practical way like you can learn theory and stuff and that's a good thing to do but you also do just have to put in the time my name's john i'm a writer and an editor and in my spare time i'm a photographer i think if there's one thing i would say to anyone it's that they should try taking pictures they might like it like it might be something you end up really enjoying and it might be something that's really good for you and even if you never show them to anyone you know even if it's something that you do just for you I think it can be really really healthy and really good I really enjoy it you know I'm gonna keep doing it probably forever and that's something I would recommend to anyone is that they at least try it